ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages. It's time for another episode of Braille Storytime, where we read stories from Braille books like this. Today's Braille story is the continuation of Ali Finkel's Rules for Girls, Book 1, Chapter 1. But but just a little, like it was barely like it barely went down. Maybe it touched her tonsils, but that's it. Still, this is not a good example of treating your friends as you would want to, them to treat you. Also, it was all my fault. I said I was sorry about a million times, but Mary Kay still wouldn't stop crying. Finally, I had no choice but to go home and sit in the wheelbarrow in the garage and tell myself it was all my fault. I'd broken the only rule of friendship that there is, which I didn't make up myself. Although a part of me couldn't help thinking that Mary K Mary Kay had broken an important rule, my own rule about never eat anything red, but especially don't choose that color for your cupcake frosting if your best friend can't stand strawberry. Even though I have to admit that the frosting was pretty good, it tasted more like vanilla with red food coloring in it than it did like strawberries, which I hate. But still, the rule I broke was the more important one, the treat your friends the way you'd want them to treat you rule. I certainly wouldn't want someone to shove a spatula down my throat, even if it was just a little. I pretty much deserved not to be Mary Kay's best friend anymore. Especially since clearly I didn't know the first thing about the rules of friendship. That is when it became clear to me that I needed to write them down. The rules, I mean. Because there are so many to remember that sometimes even I forget them. <coughs> And I'm the one who's making them up. So I found a spiral notebook in a box near the Christmas ornaments that Bob had marked school supplies. Then, using one of her permanent markers that she saves for writing on her home improvement tools and told us kids especially not to use, except that this was an emergency, so I knew she would understand. I wrote Allie Finkel's Rules for Girls across the front of it. Then I wrote, Keep out if you are not a girl. I wrote that because I have little brothers who are always butting into my business. I don't need them knowing my rules. They can make up their own rules if they're that interested. I was sitting back in the wheelbarrow, writing out the rules about remembering to wear a helmet while skateboarding on High Street when Carol surprised me by coming into the garage and asking me to come back to Mary Kay's house. She said Mary Kay was crying even harder because I left. Also, she said that I probably hadn't done any permanent damage to Mary Kay's uvula or tonsils. I got out of the wheelbarrow and went back to Mary Kay's even though I didn't really want to. I did it because that's what friends do. When I got there, Mary Kay hugged me and told me she forgave me and that she knew I hadn't meant to hurt her. I was glad Mary Kay had forgiven me, but secretly I felt a little mad too because, of course, I hadn't meant to hurt her. I swear, 
It's a total burden having a best friend who is as sensitive as Mary Kay. I always have to be super careful around her not to say or do the wrong thing, such as accidentally touch her uvula with a spatula. Because Mary Kay is an only child and used to getting her way. And if she doesn't get her way, her own way, like if we're playing Lions, her favorite game, not mine, my favorite game is Detective. Not that we ever get to play it. And I say she should be the male lion for a change because I have rug burned from crawling around doing all the hunting and I want to lie around with the cute cubs even though in the wild the female lions do all the hunting not the male lions as I know from ex uh, extensive reading on animals she just starts crying or if I get to lick the spatula and she wants it. Still, I showed her my notebook, the one in which I was writing the rules. I thought maybe if she saw the rules, she might actually try following them for a change, especially the treat your friends the way you'd want them to treat you one. First, I made her swear not to tell anybody about it, though. I explained to her that I was going to hide the notebook in a special place under the slats beneath my bed so my brothers wouldn't find it. I thought this actually might make her interested in reading it, but it didn't. Mary Kay just yawned and asked if I wanted to play Lions. Which is too bad, because if anyone could use some help with the rules of friendship, it's Mary Kay. I started to think I could use a new best friend, a different non-crying best friend, just for a change. It's kind of funny that I was thinking this, because when I got home from Mary Kay's that night, Mom and Dad told us we were moving. End of chapter one. Tune in next episode for chapter two. See ya.